what is abstract art? Now, abstract art is not scary. It is not necessarily what I used to think of. Well, you know, you see a, a dot on a wall. Someone spent the last four years contemplating this dot and they have decided this is life. This dot, this is the meaning of life. That could be abstract art. I mean, it is abstract art. Of course it is. But it's not, you know, what all abstract art needs to be. Abstract art is just not realism. That's the simplest definition I can think of. Instead of really trying our best to capture every detail of the scene, make the scene truly representative, we're representing the scene in different ways. We are representing the scene through exploring its shape, exploring its form, exploring its colour, its texture, its mood. There's so many things we can explore, but often it comes down to these sort of five things. And instead of creating a realistic, sort of tortuous, long form description of the shape or colour or whatever, we seem, seek to gain our version of the scene. I mean, this can come in really simple format. So when we're looking at an apple, instead of gridding out an apple reference and finding every sort of little nook and crevice and comparing it across so we get the proportions exactly right. Instead of that, which is a very valid and skillful form of art, instead of that, we take an apple and we go, you know what? It's a sort of loose and swirling structure. And this is now our apple. We've focused on the shape and maybe the form, the form being more the sort of 3D element. So now we add the shadow in and we've just accentuated something more specific about the apple. Whilst keeping an element of realism, we've also done an element of abstraction. Similarly, we've covered texture by showing it's a smooth structure. The colour could be real or it could be something to invoke a mood. Perhaps this is a, an apple which is in a sort of really scary shop. It's a Halloween apple, so now it's blue, perhaps with a little bit of turquoise in there because actually what we're trying to show is this apple's not in a good place. So instead of trying to create realistic colours, our colours might invoke mood. And that is basically what abstraction is. Instead of focusing on every little detail, we go, what is this scene about? What is the essence of this scene? A word you'll have heard me use all the time. And how can we simplify it to so sort of exemplify, to really show off that essence? So instead of creating a really detailed townscape or cityscape, suddenly you get the essence of a scene through showing, look, the shard and then millions and millions of people underneath in really loose format. And now we have a busy centre of London, but in an abstract form, in an achievable way, in a way that we can just quickly sketch and enjoy. And with that, let's just try a couple of really practical ideas to get started with abstraction so we can see how to get started with abstraction in any scene. The first thing we're going to have a look at now is how to abstract, where we will look at how to do it. Practically, a couple of simple things that you can try out today to start abstracting. So I've got these different references. And let's just start by having a look at this bottom one. It's a sort of a wet and slightly miserable day. This is a village on the border of England and Wales. And it's very complicated. So we could look at this from a photorealist point of view and start measuring angles and finding all the bits and pieces and trying to get the scene exactly right. But if we're abstracting, we can simplify it. So the first step, the first thing to do really is simplify. And there are a couple of really nice ways we can do that. Say in this scene, a really nice simple simplification might be just to find that kind of horizon or the, the silhouette of the scene. And just from that silhouette, we are taking what we talked about. We're taking the, the shape, the form, the idea of the scene, but we're not getting stuck in the details. It's becoming more about suggesting the scene and that lets us build our own ideas into it. We could take this very simple 
idea onto our page if I do a little thumbnail and you'll see that it won't take a very long time. In fact, it's very quick and it doesn't matter if and when I inevitably make some mistakes. But by the end, hopefully, just of this very short little silhouette, you'll see that we've already got basically the essence of our scene. And just like that, look, some really simple shapes. And we've got the feeling of this busy scene. So one thing to do to start out is just to have a look at that silhouette. Is that silhouette going to tell you a lot about the scene? Top little tip, which you obviously know already, is if it's a city, then that silhouette is bound to tell you a lot about that scene. Just getting something as simple as the shard tells you this is London. So think about that. One, one easy tip for abstracting a scene. Moving on, we've got this kind of natural landscape with a couple of buildings in. Another way, instead of focusing on this silhouette, you could find the shapes in the scene. So you've got this circle, this square, this triangle, circle here. If we jump straight onto our paper and we just draw that out in really simple terms, what have we got? Well, the key shapes we found, we've got this circle, another one here. Then we got this kind of set of rectangles leading into the triangle we talked about and the square. There's a couple of more rectangles underneath here. Then above that, overlapping everything, we've got this big circle. And then just going off to the edge, we've got this kind of really simple set of circles or ovals or however you want to describe them using your own language. And yes, this is not a photorealistic version of the scene, is it? Absolutely not. What it is, is a very quick representation of the scene. So then my two tips for how to start with the pen and the ink to create a loose representation of a scene. It should be noted that we could do a really detailed sketch, a really, really detailed sketch, and it's still abstract. Because abstract is not just the shape, not just the form, not just the ideas, the line work. It can also be the colours. So take this example, this is a detailed sketch, but it becomes abstract when we apply loose colours to it. And we can also apply loose colours to these little sketches we've done here. What I often recommend doing, especially when we're starting, is to find a colour in your scene and base your colours around that. So for our scene here, we've got this muddy green. So I'm going to start with this muddy deep green and that is real, it's not super abstract. But from there, we're gonna apply colors which work with the green. So I know green and red neutralize. So if I got this orange and this green, then in between, we'll get a kind of neutral color. So I might come in with a red for my buildings. Now they are ready, but I also know that when these colors blend and merge, we're gonna get some nice neutral tones. And because these colors are complementary opposite each other on the color wheel we're also going to get nice contrast so i'm not just thinking now about the actual colors in the scene this is obviously a red field but i want the contrast so i'm instead of using the real green i've used my red made that red field equally we can use totally mad colors if we want so you don't have to base anything on the scene but for me it's easiest and most authentic to choose something in the scene. It might be a really small part. So look, we've got this yellow house in our other scene. So maybe we find that yellow house here. We just pop that little dot of yellow in. And then we find other things which maybe we can pretend are yellow. So we've got this monument in the front. That can be a little spot of yellow. There's a little flower up here, which maybe is a yellow. Going from this yellow, we can find colours next to it on the colour wheel. So little light greens and that's all these distant trees and what we're trying to do is keep everything nice and simple so that when the viewer sees our abstract image they see these greens and they understand that everything green is probably the same thing even though this is a pretty much a red tree it's now green and that is part of the abstraction that is part of us shortening the visual language and making it much easier for people to interpret our version of the scene. And this is what abstract is. It's our version of the scene. It's not the scene. It's a representation of it, which tells more than just the sort of facts of the scene. 
Now, hopefully with this really quick demonstration, you're feeling ready, starting to understand some of those really easy concepts that can move us into our sort of little project for today. And here we are, we are ready for our proper scene. So I'm gonna be talking through a lot of the same concepts again. This time I'm using a nice bit of 100% cotton paper. I've got my Noodlers Ahab, my same watercolors I always use. And let's just go for this scene and talk about the decisions we're making to take this from a real scene, a real photo, into something more abstract. Now for me, we're focusing on these little houses in the middle. So I'm gonna start there and they form that lovely silhouette. So for me, that's a really great place to just start our little sort of sketching journey. And there's a, a lovely phrase which people uh, use and I, I can't remember, I don't even know if anyone knows who used it first. I've heard lots of artists say it, this idea of taking a line for a walk. So what we're doing, we are finding this silhouette, but what we're doing is we're taking our line for a walk. Our line might go off in the wrong direction a bit, it might, you know, do its own thing. We're going to make mistakes, but that's all right. We are just seeing where this line sort of flows and moves as we find this silhouette. Now, when we're doing a silhouette like this, it's very easy to get lost. But remember, it doesn't matter. If we get a bit lost, if we've over-abstracted, we can always come back and change things in a bit. Just keep it nice and loose and gentle and you'll be fine. Having done this, we can then start to focus on some other parts of our scene. In the very distance, we've got this lovely tree and then a tree here. And then of course that brings us all the way to the front where we've got this big bold outline. And that is a really nice frame. That's something which pushes our vision back in. Moving over then we can continue the same idea off to the other side. So just really simply get some of these shapes. We've got another little chimney here and then we just use some of these shapes again to provide a similar sort of frame pushing in, pushing in on both sides. Having done this silhouette, we've got already an abstract version of our scene. And now we just choose how much detail to add. So for me, I'm going to focus a little bit on some of the shapes. I'm not going to try and finish things off though, because if we're trying to finish off every detail, suddenly we've gone from a nice abstract version of a scene to us trying to produce something really real. So instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come along, I'm gonna just build in some of the key bits I find. So some of these windows to me feel quite key. They tell us a lot about what's going on. So I'll get those shapes in. The fact that these windows get closer and closer together. And back here, the fact you can barely see the windows. That is also important because it's telling us that these houses are going off into the distance. So although this is abstract, it's also giving us a lot of sort of visual information. Similarly, these key sort of vertical lines, they tell us about how the houses are overlapping and interacting. Underneath, this little line here feels quite important. This line where we've got this um, sort of hedge on top and then the wall underneath, because that tells us the flow of the street and it finishes off this perspective. So we've got one vanishing point going off of, over this way and another going off over this way. And just by simply including this wall, suddenly we can put these sort of head shapes, if you like, underneath the house. And now we've got these abstract but geometric shapes down into these abstract but sort of swirly, loose, natural shapes. So our scene is split into man-made and natural really simple ideas takes a little bit of confidence but if you just got a bit of confidence in yourself you will be able to do it it really doesn't take much skill just that confidence and a bit of experience if you wanted you could pop these cars in again just keeping them as simple shapes will sort of tell the story so we could even just draw in the wind uh, the um the windshields the air uh, the screens, the rear, the rear screens, I can't remember what they're called, wind screens, the rear wind screens of the car. You could draw those in and you could pop the kind of wheels going underneath. And that kind of tells the eye enough about what's going on. Equally, you could spend more time adding in more detail if you wanted, but you don't have to. That's the important thing about abstract art. You don't have to. You add the details which you want and you leave other things out. Now for me, I think actually that's our line work basically done. There's a couple of other 
small bits to add in. Maybe we want these kind of pavements, because look again, these tiny little abstract shapes suddenly flesh out the whole scene. And maybe, maybe we also just want this kind of looming lamppost. Again, just an abstract shape, but even as an abstract shape, it tells us so much about the scene and our viewpoint. So that's all we're trying to do. We're trying to take what is a complicated scene, simplify it, and just find the bits which are important, find the bits which tell the story. So for me, the story is the flow of this scene. It's the interaction of man-made and not man-made, <laughs> natural. And then it's the way these houses are stacking in perspective, disappearing off. And now it's the time to play with our colours. So we talked about a few ways to approach this. Now, again, for me, it's important to remember to focus on what drew us to this scene. And it's that bright light. And one great way of leaving bright light is to leave the page white, especially in watercolours. So what we're going to do to start with is actually focus on the sky and the shadows and nothing else. So I'm just going to splash some water into the sky. And this is a great way of keeping things abstract because I'm not going to be able to control the colours properly. I've got a bit of cobalt mixed with a bit of indigo and we'll drop that in. Just simply drop that into there. And this variation is going to just naturally occur. I'm holding my uh, pad at about 15 degrees as well. And that's going to give us this kind of flow of, of the uh, pigment, flow of the water, which is just going to, again, keep things varied and get that, hopefully, that moody feel of this sky without me having to actually put in the effort to, to shape the sky much myself. A little bit here of uh, lunar black and to bring this sky across so we get this framing effect. That lunar black again, just there for texture and a little bit of extra mood. Then a bit of neat cobalt blue to just brighten it, to push back against that very dull black colour. And all I've done is brought that sky fairly neatly down to that silhouette. That's where we started. One of our first techniques to try and it's also how we started this image. Now I can use this same mix of lunar black, indigo, cobalt blue. And I'm just going to bring it down. I'm going to bring it down through a shadow in our building. And then I'm going to fill the shadows which we find in our scene. Because this is again abstracting. It's finding the key element of the scene and just leaving it at that. And already I think just with these simple touches of shadow it's sort of coming together remarkably well. We've got the right feeling, we've got the right shape. So there's not too much more that we actually really have to do. But of course we will do a bit more because it would be very boring if we just ended immediately. But it's important to remember that you don't have to, that you can always end these things surprisingly quickly. So what else am I going to do? Well I'm going to find a few more of these shadows that are coming down in between the houses for example, at the side of the house being very careful not to lose that lovely white though. We want plenty of that white coming through. Just going to swap to a smaller brush now and introduce a bit of a murky green. So what we've got so far is this kind of realistic-ish shadow and I'm going to introduce one more realistic colour, this green. But I'm going to keep the green flowing and moving. It's going to push, because I'm holding my pad up, it's going to push into the shadows. And we're going to just find these kind of shapes we called uh, bushes and hedges and things and just give those a uniform little touch of green. If we want to simulate a bit of light within those, take a little bit of yellow. So I've got a little bit of Hansa yellow here and we could just drop that in. And this is an abstract way of saying, look, there's light shining on there. Because in reality, none of these trees are yellow. But again, we are using the colours to talk for for themselves. We're not using the colours to uh, specifically represent something in the scene. Rather, we're re representing an idea. We're representing the idea of light by using a bright colour. And with that, well, actually, I'm just going to add a little texture, some little splashes. That could be splashes of, of pigment. It could just be splashes of water, which will produce a lot of texture on watercolour. And I'm going to let this dry and then we'll see what happens and we'll do a tiny little couple of extra touches and before you know we'll have finished our scene.
So here we are, not entirely dry, but mostly dry and dry in the key places. The sort of focal area is dry and that's where we want to focus when we come back. So what have we got? We've got a very pleasant scene. It's got a real sort of feeling of fluidity and it is telling the story of this very shadowed day, but with some really punchy light coming through. So we already basically told the story of our scene. What we now want to think about is how can we elevate this sketch? What can we do to elevate it? And there's a couple of things which is almost always the answer. One is adding a sort of punch of contrast. Here, everything has got one kind of mid tone or mid value. There isn't any real dark tones. We've got white, mid, but nothing black. So that's one thing. And the other thing is often a punch of color, something to stand out. So let's look at how we can do both those. And we're gonna start with the contrast. And a great place to use our contrast will probably be in these greens. So I'm going to mix up a bit more of our green and this time alongside my green I'm adding a little bit of lunar black and that's just going to apply something extra in terms of texture. I'm not intending to rhyme there but that did sound quite nice to my head. Anyway what we're doing just adding in a little bit of that coming back softening those edges so instead of applying little hard bits of um, pigment we've applied a bit of extra value but then softened it to take away that hard edge to make it still feel like it's flowing with the rest of the image using that wet paper we can just touch in i'm touching a little bit more of that lunar black to really emphasize that contrast and hopefully you can see really simply like that we've actually lifted this already already there's more shape so we can continue that idea if we want with let's just take a little bit of that lunar black and now meld it with this idea of providing something sort of punchy. At the moment this is a very cool blue scene so let's find a little bit of red, a little bit of warmth in there. We've got places we can find that so we've got this kind of wall has a bit of red but we could abstract it and add some red in other places of the wall. We could splash it, that red doesn't actually have to relate to anything. At the point that we are abstracting art, we can just be doing things because it works for our piece of art or because we want to try it. So just having a, a bit of red to complement all these cooler tones, it's a perfectly good enough reason just to put the red in. Similarly, if you've watched me, you know I love a red chimney. So here they come, a couple of little red chimneys, some of which are going to leak out into the sky. And again, if you know me, you'll know that I love that effect. So I'm going to let that happen. A couple of the cars could be red and maybe just even a couple more splashes around. There still could be a little bit of extra value just having a look. So I'm going to find a little bit more of our cobalt indigo mix this time. And now I'm just going to add a tiny bit more shadow into where we had those shadows before. And what you'll find is when you use watercolours, as they dry, they very much lose their intensity, which means we layer up to increase shadow, to increase value. We need to be thinking layers. So we need to be going a little bit more sort of uh, intense than we think at the beginning, but also being aware that however hard we try, we are going to be coming back. So don't worry when it just doesn't look right after the first layer. It's not supposed to, watercolours aren't supposed to work straight away. They're supposed to be quick medium where you can keep coming back and enhancing. Again, a few touches, just abstract touches of blue into these shadows. They just, it lifts that shadow, it adds an extra dimension. And if we want, we could just do some, again, little abstract reflections in these windows. But just like that, we're done. And there you go. If you have enjoyed this little journey into how to think about abstracting your art, creating abstract urban scenes, but also the same techniques for landscapes, then let me know in the comments. Like, subscribe and follow me, of course, if you want to see more of my tutorials. You can also find me on sketchloose.co.uk where I host lots of long form courses, really long courses, an in-depth look into these loose semi-abstract sketching processes. So thank you everyone for watching my little sketching videos. If you enjoy my content, please do subscribe to my channel because it makes me really, really happy. Thanks again.